should have done this a while ago. Sorry, John. John lives in Belfast. This is John Norcross and uh, wants to wish Susan, who I suspect is his wife, a happy birthday. Early 40s. I'm not going to say how old you are, Susan. It's your business. I have a happy birthday and he thinks the world of you. hard to know uh, with stories like this just how tough it has been um, and it's easy to criticize and heaven knows we all do criticize other people because you see stories in the papers and you think oh I know which way that's going this is from Alec who lives on the Isle of Wight 1975 he left school in Bristol got a job as an apprentice electrician working around the city in various places and one contract meant he had to catch a bus to Temple Meads not far from the railway station and wait to be picked up by the rest of the team. Uh, you know, I suspect young, bit spotty, and uh, first time in a job and loving every minute of every day. And on the first day he was waiting, a bus stopped near to where he was standing, and he saw, quite simply, the most beautiful girl he'd ever seen. And he was gobsmacked. He was 18 years old, and she was gorgeous, and she had a smile, and her hair was lovely, and her eyes were bright and shining, and she smiled. And every morning from then on, he'd look for her, and they'd smile and wave to each other, and that went on for weeks and weeks. And he fell completely for this mystery girl, which sounds perhaps silly, but you try being 18. He had no way of finding out who she was and of meeting her. The weeks went by, every day they'd wave and smile, and he'd wonder. He hadn't heard her voice even. One night, he went to Tiffany's. Remember Tiffany's? Uh, Tuesday night, they used to play stuff like Deep Purple and Led Zepp, which wasn't what he was into at the time. Uh, from the outside, the place looked like an aircraft hangar, but inside, it was all decorated out with stalactites and stalagmites, and the music was loud, the place was full, and he went to the bar, got a drink, talking to his friends, turned round, and there she was, standing there. The girl from the bus, and he literally dropped his drink in surprise. He stood there, Alex stood there looking for what felt to him like an eternity. She looked up, saw him, broke into a smile that he's never forgotten, ran towards him. He ran towards her like a movie, and they met somewhere in the middle and kissed. And it was incredible, and the earth did move, and her name was Angela. She was a nurse, same age, and even at that stage he knew that she was the one. And they were together for years after that. Sometimes they'd take a break, but they always got back together. If Angela had a problem, she'd call him, and he was her knight in shining armour. And I don't think either of them realised just how special what they had was until in 1981 she announced she was going to Chicago, uh, just for a while to visit relatives, and you know what happened. That's it. She uh, met somebody, a friend of a relative in Chicago, who swept her off her feet and she came back and in December 1981 they went for one last drink at a pub where there was a DJ and the song came on that became their tune. And Angela kept in touch every month by letter but he knew that what he'd lost was his soulmate. Then she told him she was getting married, that he would always hold a special place in her heart and he was on the rebound in a major way, uh, met somebody and his daughter was born a year later, and the letters from Angela got fewer and fewer, until in 1987 they finally stopped. And looking back, he had married on the rebound. He doesn't blame anyone but himself for this, but Alec had a good life, but there was no spark, there was no electricity. A great life, in fact, a wonderful baby girl, a very kind wife, a nice home, and... The honest truth is, he'd think about Angela. She wrote to say she had two children, a daughter and a son, but the man she'd married had cheated on her and treated her pretty badly, and then she told him she'd made a big mistake going to America. He wrote back saying, look, I'm married, you know, I have a daughter, and I, I think you are the love of my life, but I have a wife and a daughter, and I cannot do 
what you ask. If what you ask is saying, maybe we can make a go of it again. So the years went by. He had a son as well. They moved from Bristol to the Isle of Wight. And Angela was never far from his thoughts. The love never died. In 2002, his marriage failed. They'd grown apart over the years. Both of them had tried, no one's fault, but they had different interests. And they waited until the kids had grown up, gone to university and had their own lives. And then they separated and divorced and he tried to find the real happiness that he was missing and looked for Angela on the internet to see where she was and who she was now, but he couldn't find her. He went back to Bristol and visited where her mum and dad had lived, but they weren't there. And eventually he left a message on the nurse's bulletin board for the hospital where she used to work, asking if anyone knew where she was, leaving his email address. And five years later, there was a strange email from an address that he didn't recognize saying, hi, this is Alec, I used to live in Bristol. And within a minute, he realized who it was. It's me. And a photo gradually appeared, and it was Angela. All he replied was, do you know how bloody long I've been looking for you? And after a few moments, she replied, I've never stopped loving you, what's your number? So he sent his number, And seconds later, the phone rang. And years after, decades after they'd first met and first kissed in Tiffany's in Bristol, they talked for hours. No awkwardness, no shyness, just a huge bill. It was all so natural. And they were still talking and crying together eight hours later. They both said that she should never have left. They'd both spent years looking for each other. And she'd only just found that email address on the hospital website. Well, she still lived in the US. She'd remarried. That had gone horribly wrong. Um, She'd married a surgeon, second marriage, whose family owned most of the town they lived in. He controlled her. He told her what clothes to wear was very intimidating. Told her who she could have as friends had kicked her kids out of the house when they were old enough but maintained his children. In fact, on his website, he was the chief surgeon, he said that he had three children. Those were his from the first marriage, but no mention of Angela's two kids at all. They were still married. Uh, They lived apart, had separate lives in the same house. And you can imagine, she called about a week later and said, that's it, I'm coming over. And she did. Angela's cab pulled up in front of Alex's mum and dad's house, she got out, they looked at each other and fell into each other's arms and they cried and they talked for hours and hours till four o'clock the following day. She went back to the States on February the 16th. They spoke every day, they messaged, they Skyped. They did all the things that you do under these circumstances and every message and call said that she wanted them to be together. And she came back. They met at Heathrow, had a couple of days in London sightseeing and getting to know each other again. And then she said she'd go back to the US, sign the divorce papers, collect her stuff and come back for good. That's it, the soulmate. He gave her his late father's ring and she gave him uh, an engagement ring that she bought for him years before. And she never came back. She went quiet for a few days and eventually just sent a note saying, I can't be with you, I can't explain now, but hopefully one day we will be back. He knows she's okay, he's seen her on Facebook. She hasn't emailed or called since. They had six months together and waited for 35 years to get together. But there is no future for either of them. And as Alex says, If you do happen to find that particular person, that soulmate, don't doubt it, don't hesitate. Grab hold of them and find a way of getting together. You may never get a second chance.